All right. So I, I look, I, I'm a novice, right? But as you said, it got close to the sun. It changed colors uh, because it got hotter. Wouldn't that be natural, though? 3i Atlas is getting closer to Earth. On December 19th, it'll reach its closest point to us. And the latest images show something that shouldn't be possible. Look at this tail. It's pointing toward the sun, not away from it, toward it. Every other comet we've ever observed does the opposite. Solar wind and radiation pressure push their tails away from the sun. That's basic physics. We've known this for decades, but 3i Atlas has been doing this for five months straight. It did it in July when it was approaching the sun. It's still doing it now as it's leaving the sun. So what's going on? Normal tails versus this tail. Here's how comet tails are supposed to work. When a comet gets close to the sun, it heats up. Frozen gases on the surface turn into gas. This is called sublimation. The gas carries dust with it, and that creates a coma, which is the fuzzy cloud around the comet's nucleus. Then, solar wind comes into play. Solar wind is a stream of charged particles constantly flowing out from the sun. It moves at about 400 kilometers per second. When it hits the gas and dust around a comet, it pushes that material away from the sun. That's what creates the tail. Solar radiation pressure does the same thing. Sunlight itself has momentum. When photons hit dust particles, they push them, not very hard. But over time, it's enough to create a long tail stretching away from the sun. This is why comet tails always point away from the sun. It doesn't matter which direction the comet is moving, the tail points away from the sun. When the comet is approaching the sun, the tail trails behind it. When the comet is leaving the sun, the tail goes in front of it, but it always points away. You can see this in every famous comet photo. Halley's Comet, Comet Neowise, Haley Bob. The tail is always on the side opposite the sun. Think of it like smoke from a campfire. The wind blows the smoke in one direction. The fire itself doesn't matter. You can walk around the campfire with a torch. The smoke from your torch will still blow the same direction as the campfire smoke because the wind is pushing it. Solar wind works the same way. It flows out from the sun in all directions. Any comet anywhere in the solar system will have its tail pushed away from the sun. We've observed hundreds of comets. They all follow this rule. It's not a theory. It's an observation that's been confirmed thousands of times. 3i Atlas doesn't do this. On July 21, 2025, the Hubble Space Telescope captured an image of 3i Atlas. The comet was approaching the sun. It was about 2.98 times the Earth-Sun distance away. And the image showed a bright teardrop-shaped glow extending toward the sun, not away, toward. The glow was obvious, not subtle, not a faint feature you need image processing to see. It's right there in the raw image, a bright, elongated structure pointing in the wrong direction. Astronomers called it an anti-tail because it points the opposite direction of where tails are supposed to point. At the time, some people thought it might be a perspective effect, like an optical illusion. Sometimes when you view a comet from certain angles, parts of the tail can appear to point sunward even though they're actually pointing away. It's just geometry. The tail is actually curving around in three-dimensional space, and from our viewing angle, it looks wrong. So everyone figured the anti-tail would disappear once 3i Atlas passed perihelion. Perihelion is the closest point to the sun. After that, the comet would be heading away from the sun. And from Earth's perspective, we'd see the tail in its normal configuration. Except that's not what happened. On November 30th, 2025, Hubble observed 3i Atlas again. The comet was now receding from the sun. It had already passed perihelion on October 29th, and it was 1.91 times the Earth-Sun distance away. The anti-tail was still there, still pointing toward the Sun. The teardrop-shaped glow extended about 60,000 kilometers in the direction of the Sun. That's about 10 times the radius of Earth. And it's not subtle. It's bright. It shows up clearly in the images. If anything, the anti-tail looked more defined in the November image than it did in July. The structure was sharper, the boundaries were clearer, whatever is creating this feature, it's not fading away, it's persisting. This proves it's not a perspective effect. If it were just geometry, the anti-tail would have disappeared or flipped direction when the comet passed perihelion. It didn't. It stayed pointing sunward. 
the orientation remained constant. Amateur astronomers had been tracking 3i Atlas too, thousands of images from backyard telescopes around the world, different viewing angles, different times, different instruments. They all show the same thing. The anti-tail is real. It's been there since at least July, and it's still there now. One astronomer in Thailand, Tirasak Thaluang, captured an image on December the 13th, 2025. The anti-tail was clearly visible. Same orientation, same structure. This is less than a week before closest approach to Earth. The feature is persistent. So if solar wind and radiation pressure push everything away from the sun, what's pushing this material toward the sun? The physics problem. The anti-tail extends 60,000 kilometers toward the sun. That's a massive structure and it's made of gas and dust, the same stuff that should be getting blown away from the sun. To create a tail pointing sunward, you need particles moving against the solar wind. That means you need a force pushing them in the opposite direction, a force stronger than solar radiation pressure and solar wind combined. But what force? Gravity pulls things toward the sun, but gravity affects the whole comet equally. It doesn't create a jet or a tail and 3i Atlas is moving on a hyperbolic orbit. It's going fast enough that the sun's gravity only bends its path slightly. Gravity isn't creating this anti-tail. The comet is moving at about 58 kilometers per second relative to the sun at its current distance. That's escape velocity and then some. Gravity is pulling on it, sure, but not enough to create a 60,000 kilometer structure of material pointing sunward. If gravity were doing this, Every comet would have an anti-tail. They don't. Maybe the comet's rotation is flinging material sunward. Except rotation creates jets that point in all directions as the comet spins. It doesn't create a sustained structure pointing in one specific direction for five months. Maybe there's outgassing from a vent on the sun-facing side. That could create a jet pointing toward the sun. But jets from outgassing don't extend 60,000 kilometers. They're usually a few hundred to a few thousand kilometers at most, and they change as the comet rotates and as different parts of the surface heat up. This anti-tail has been remarkably stable. Same direction, same approximate length, same brightness profile for five months. Here's another problem. NASA held a press conference about 3i Atlas on November the 19th, 2025. They discussed observations from Hubble, from the James Webb Space Telescope, from Mars orbiters. They talked about the comet's composition, its size, its trajectory. They didn't mention the anti-tail. Not once. That's strange. Because this is one of the most visually obvious features of the comet. You don't need a PhD to see it. You just need to look at the images. And NASA has those images. Hubble is their telescope. They processed the data. They released the images to the public. And then they held a press conference and didn't bring it up. Maybe they don't think it's important. Maybe they have an explanation and didn't feel the need to address it publicly. Or maybe they don't have an explanation and they're waiting for more data before saying anything. We don't know, but the silence is odd. Either way, the anti-tail is there. It's been documented in thousands of images, and it defies the basic physics of how comet tails work. Astronomers have published three different papers trying to explain it, and honestly, all three explanations are kind of wild. The theories. Theory one is evaporating ice particles. This theory was proposed by Eric Quito and Avi Loeb in two separate papers. The idea is that tiny ice particles are shed from the sun-facing side of the comet. These particles are very small, maybe a micrometer across, and they're made of water ice or carbon dioxide ice. When these particles are ejected from the surface, they start sublimating immediately. They're heated by sunlight. The ice turns to gas and the particles shrink. Here's the key part. As the particles sublimate, they lose mass. They get smaller and lighter. And before solar radiation pressure can push them away from the sun, they evaporate completely. So you end up with a cloud of ice particles that only exist close to the nucleus. They don't make it far enough to get pushed into a normal tail. Instead, they create a sunward glow because they're concentrated on the side facing the sun. The math works. If the particles are small enough and if they sublimate fast enough, you can create a structure that looks like an anti-tail. The idea is that the particles have a very short lifetime. They're ejected from the surface. They exist for maybe a few seconds or minutes, and then they're gone. 
During that brief time, they scatter sunlight, they create a bright glow, and because they're all concentrated near the nucleus on the sun-facing side, that glow extends sunward. It's like steam from a kettle. The steam rises, but it doesn't rise very far before it cools down and becomes invisible. You only see the steam close to the spout. Same concept here. The ice particles only exist close to the nucleus before they evaporate. But here's the problem. This has never been observed at this scale before. Small comets sometimes show a faint sunward glow when they're very close to the sun. But 3i Atlas is showing a 60,000 km anti-tail at distances of 2 to 3 AU from the sun. That's much farther out than where you'd expect this effect. And 3i Atlas is big. The nucleus is somewhere between a few hundred meters and a few kilometers across. It's shedding a lot of material. For the evaporating ice theory to work, the comet would need to be producing an enormous amount of tiny ice particles, more than we've seen from any other comet. It's possible, but it's stretching what we know about comet physics. Theory 2 is a swarm of objects. This theory was proposed by Avi Loeb in a paper published on December 8, 2025, and it's based on a measurement that's been puzzling astronomers for months. 3i Atlas has non-gravitational acceleration. That means it's not following a purely gravitational trajectory. Something is pushing it slightly. The comet is accelerating away from the Sun by a small amount that can't be explained by the Sun's gravity alone. This happens with comets. Outgassing creates thrust. When gas jets off one side of the comet, it pushes the comet in the opposite direction. It's like a tiny rocket engine. The effect is small, but over time it adds up, and it changes the orbit slightly. For 3i Atlas, the non-gravitational acceleration has been measured. It's real. The comet is being pushed away from the Sun. Now here's Loeb's idea. What if 3i Atlas shed a bunch of objects? Maybe during perihelion, when it was closest to the Sun. Maybe earlier. These objects could be fragments, boulders, dust clumps, whatever. If 3i Atlas is being pushed away from the Sun by outgassing, but these objects aren't, then the objects would lag behind. They'd stay closer to the Sun than the main nucleus. The distance they'd lag depends on the strength of the non-gravitational force and how long it's been acting. Loeb calculated that at 3i Atlas's current distance from the Sun, objects that don't share its acceleration would be about 54,000 to 60,000 kilometers closer to the Sun. That matches the observed length of the anti-tail almost exactly. Here's the interesting part. A swarm of small objects would have a much larger total surface area than the main nucleus, even if the total mass is a tiny fraction of the comet's mass. For example, if you took 1% of the comet's mass and broke it into a trillion tiny fragments, those fragments would have 100 times more surface area than the nucleus. Think about it this way. If you have a basketball, and you shatter it into a million pieces, all those pieces combined have way more surface area than the original basketball. Same mass, way more surface area. More surface area means more sunlight reflected, which means the swarm would be bright, bright enough to show up as a distinct feature in images. And because the swarm is always lagging behind the main nucleus by the same distance, it would create a stable, anti-tail structure pointing toward the sun. The theory fits the observations. The anti-tail length matches the predicted lag distance. The brightness is explained by the surface area, and the stability makes sense because the swarm maintains a constant separation from the nucleus. But here's the question. Where did this swarm come from? Did 3i Atlas fragment during perihelion? Did it shed a shell of material months ago? Is this normal behavior for interstellar comets? We don't know. Theory 3 is something we haven't thought of yet, because honestly, neither of the first two theories is proven. The evaporating ice model works mathematically, but requires conditions we've never observed. The swarm model fits the data, but requires a fragmentation event we didn't see. Maybe there's a third explanation. Maybe there's a combination of effects. Maybe we're missing something fundamental about how interstellar comets behave. The only way to find out is to get better data. The test. December 19th, 2025 is when 3i Atlas makes its closest approach to Earth. It'll be about 269 million kilometers away. That's still very far, but it's the closest it'll ever get. 
And December 19th happens to coincide with a new moon. That means the sky will be dark. No moonlight washing out faint details. It's the perfect observing night. Multiple telescopes are already scheduled to observe 3 I Atlas. Hubble, Webb, ground-based observatories around the world. They'll be measuring everything they can. The key measurements are jet speeds and composition. If the anti-tail is made of evaporating ice particles, the particles should be moving at thermal speeds. That's a few hundred meters per second, maybe up to a kilometer per second if they're heated really hot. If the anti-tail is a swarm of objects, or if it's something else entirely, the speeds might be different. Higher speeds would suggest a different mechanism. Lower speeds would suggest something weird is going on with the dynamics. Spectroscopy will tell us what the anti-tail is made of. If it's water ice and carbon dioxide ice, that supports the evaporating particle theory. If it's dust or rock or something unusual, that changes the picture. The composition of the jets will also tell us about the comet itself. What volatiles is it shedding? How much? At what rate? That data will help us understand whether this is a normal comet doing something unusual or whether 3I Atlas is fundamentally different from other comets. Specifically, astronomers want to measure the ratio of different molecules. How much water vapor compared to carbon dioxide? How much carbon monoxide? How much methanol? These ratios tell you about the temperature and pressure conditions where the comet formed. They tell you about its history, and the imaging will show us if the anti-tail changes. Does it get brighter as the comet approaches Earth? Does it change shape? Does it fragment? Does the length change? All of that tells us something about what's causing it. Every detail matters when you're trying to solve a mystery like this. This is a one-time opportunity. 3I Atlas is leaving the solar system. After it passes Earth, it'll keep moving outbound. By March 2026, it'll be near Jupiter, and then it'll be gone. We'll never see it again. The comet is on a hyperbolic orbit with an eccentricity over six. That means it's not coming back, ever. This isn't like Halley's Comet, where we can wait 76 years for another pass. This is it. So the data we collect in the next few weeks is all we're going to get, and that data will determine which theory is right, or if we need a new theory. The anti-tail has been pointing toward the sun for five months. It's not going away, and we're about to find out why. So which theory do you think explains it? Evaporating ice particles? A swarm of fragments? Or something else entirely? Let me know in the comments. And subscribe for the December 19th observations because we're about to get answers.